every Mega Man X game has a new armor. In fact, it's one of the biggest driving factors to exploring those games. The armors are cool and fun to use, while offering all sorts of tools that work with different playstyles. There is a question that is brought up from time to time. Which is the strongest? Perhaps it would be the one labeled as the ultimate armor? So buckle in as we drive into the lore of the almighty ultimate armor. The Ultimate Armor has a unique little backstory to its creation, and I don't mean by Dr. Light. During the development of Rockman X4, it was decided that the game would come with an exclusive model for the Mega Armor line that had been running a lot with the Mega Missions and Mega Man X3 love. While under a time crunch of four days, one designer was tasked to come up with a new armor that included a gimmick for the Mega Armor models. He said he was playing with the existing models, and by combining them in various ways for inspiration, he constructed something that resembled an airplane. At that moment, he knew what it was that he wanted for the armor and got to work on it. The gimmick that was created here was a jet-like contraption that X could even ride on. Overall in practice, I wouldn't say it came out quite as planned as X has issues standing on it, but hey, it got the green light and the modeling part began production. With the model now made, it was time to put it in the game. Yes, you did hear that correctly. The toy came before anything else with the ultimate armor. Funny how it seemed to be a little backwards, but what's not funny is that they also planned to do the same thing for Zero, giving him an ultimate armor. Sadly, this idea was scrapped, but at least we got to see a sketch of it, and we know it would have had a connection to Wily. Maybe one day they'll revisit that. At some point, Dr. Light created an armor that was solely for combat. The armor increases X's latent abilities for power. However, due to the rapid increase in power, this armor is deemed as detrimental to X's health. Due to this, the armor parts were sealed away and considered forbidden. An interesting thing to note is that Light mentioned to X that the armor is incomplete. What is missing from it is anyone's guess. While in X4 a code was required for the ultimate armor, in X5 one could acquire the armor naturally, so long as you knew what to do. Going into Zero Space, X ventures in without an armor. To much surprise, there is an armor capsule here. Light is shocked that X would venture in without an armor, and says that he should not proceed without adequate equipment, and that to finish this battle, he would need the ultimate armor. There could be some debate on the subject, but all signs do point that this is where X would truly get the ultimate armor. Either you play as X and pick it up, or you play as Zero and fight against it. It is interesting to note that if you fight X, he has the X4 color scheme with the purple parts, while when you use it in-game, he has normal light blue ones. Then in X6, it's a darkish gray or black color, and there seems to be an air on the mugshot as the armor retains its gold points, but in the sprites, and the recolored artwork for the Legacy Collection, those parts are silver or gray. It gets darker as the titles progress, leading many to believe that the armor is actually degrading. That's just a theory though. The last time we see it is in the X Legacy Collection, where it has a cool new white and light blue color scheme for the double boss battle mode, which isn't canon, but it's a neat addition nonetheless. It does look great in X-Dive 2. In the manga, X does get the ultimate armor while dealing with the Repliforce War. Hitting an all-time low of not being strong enough, he dons the ultimate armor despite Light telling him it's too powerful in a double-edged sword that could kill him. Now armored, X takes to the Mavericks and just goes absolutely mad with power. It's evident that he loses his own self with the armor, as he is seen showing no mercy to anyone. While Slash Beast and Storm L were defeated and groveling, X simply blasts them without hesitation, and grinning at that. Even during a confrontation with Zero, X coldly warns him not to interfere, or he'll end him too. It's not until on the final weapon, 
when a throwdown with Double and a warm hug from General, does X see what he's become? With the revelation, he accepts his fate of being caught in the blast of Final Weapon's explosion, but the armor protects him and purifies, or transforms, into the fourth armor. It's interesting to see the two armors connected here, as in-game, they're nearly identical. This armor comes in looking flashy. It has transparent blue parts, which allow it to stand out among the other armors, as well as it turning X's limbs purple. The back has wings, and a propulsion system which allows him to activate the almighty Nova Strike. His helmet comes with a cool three-prong ornament, which really shows off his red gem. For some reason, his buster has wings too. I don't know what's up with that. While the design is complex, it doesn't look busy. It's also the only armor to completely change its color when switching special weapons. So this bad boy comes in any flavor you want. The Ultimate Armor's abilities can be broken down into four parts, like the rest of the armor sets, even though you acquire the armor all at once. The Helmet allows X to use special weapons unlimited unless charged. This ability, however, gets degraded in X5 and X6, to them now using half of the required energy. The Body acts as armor and reduces damage as you would expect, and it is the part that allows him to use his super move the Nova Strike. Here, the armor's wings open, and X will become invincible while propelling himself forward in an aura of energy that will damage anything it comes into contact with. The arm parts grant the plasma shot, which is a massive charge shot. When this gigantic cluster of energy hits a target, it creates a little plasma field at that spot. The legs, much like the armors that came before it, enable an air dash, but also have small boosters that allow X to hover. When it comes to the ultimate armor's uniqueness, honestly, it's pretty much all in the design. It is a copy of the fourth armor, but with all the Nova Strike one could wish for. Perhaps this is why it's detrimental to X's health, cause lord knows how many times I've done this. <laughs> While well, being the same as the 4th armor, there is a few abilities advertised that never made it in the game. Some speculate this is why Light mentions the armor being incomplete. These abilities are the buster being able to concentrate an energy at the tip, and then being able to use that energy as an energy blade. The armor allowing flight and air mobility, and the armor transforming into a rideable jet, which actually did get put into a game, kind of, with X-Dive. The beam blade and the jet were created for the toy, and, well, air mobility on a toy is just kind of really how you play with it. Throughout the games, the armor doesn't change, which is a shame, as these extra abilities would have been a nice addition in future installments. Lord knows, aerial movement would have helped the armor in X6. And, speaking of, while X6 was the last game we saw the ultimate armor, it skipped a game and kind of reappeared in X8 with a new look. Mega Man X8 introduced a neat feature with the armor system, giving X a gray armor called the Neutral Armor that did nothing but make him look like an edgelord, or that he had a cone of shame. But this armor allowed you to equip parts from two chipsets to build the armor you wanted. One set was red, and the other was blue. However, by putting in a special code like the games before. You could now get one that was a mix of the two, changing the armor color purple and dubbing itself Ultimate Armor. I am personally iffy on calling this the Ultimate Armor, and rather viewing it as the true state of the neutral armor. As in its ultimate form, it does draw new abilities from the red and blue chipsets. It regains unlimited special weapon use, now even when charged, X can jump higher, move faster, and even dash through enemies without taking damage. He gains super armor, and he can now perform a Shoryuken. While he retains the plasma shot, 
and the Nova Strike. He loses the ability to hover in the air, and the Nova Strike has a short cooldown between uses. Which is fair, because that thing hits harder than Lamb throwing a PET. While the neutral armor's ultimate form is debatable for being an ultimate armor, there is a wildly different armor that takes the same name and command mission. After defeating a secret optional boss, X can acquire the ultimate armor as a hyper mode. Now, there isn't any information defining what a hyper mode is. We see X has another armor set with it, and Zero gets a bat design, and Cinnamon becomes a maid. Hmm. Well, the others are just color changes. Because as non-hunters can perform this, it makes me wonder what the deal with it actually is. But either way, through this, X is able to take on the ultimate armor, which is just a hovering tank of absolute firepower. The armor itself looks like someone just glued the USS Enterprise on X's back, as he has a radar dish and a cool eye lens that helps him lock onto foes with his American-sized buster cannons. If you can even really call them that. Look at those things. They're huge. With this armor, X can now fire out EMP missiles from his busters and follow up with a massive chest beam. When needed, X can use his lock-on feature and then unload everything at once in one massive barrage of absolute carnage. There is frankly no denying the strength of this armor. It's terrifying. If you think that was all for the ultimate armor, then I have a surprise for you. The armor has one more appearance. In Mega Man Zero, a copy X serves as the final boss for the first game. While looking like a Zero Series styled X, he does armor up in what some people consider an angelic look. Looking at the concept art notes though, this armor is listed as Ultimate, implying it is, at least, another form of the ultimate armor. Both have wings on their back, legs, buster, and a chest piece that is pointing downwards. As well, both can perform the Nova Strike. Copy X, though, does have a few different moves. His charge shot is just a plasma blast, and later in Zero Three, we see he's able to fire a reflecting laser. It can also make use of the three elemental chips that the Zero series uses for weaknesses, and changes the element and property of his buster. While this armor did appear in the Zero manga, it was a fusion of the four guardians that created it and Copy X as one being, rather than it being an armored Copy X war himself. In this form, the guardians take on Zero for a short final battle that they ultimately lose. And that wraps up the ultimate armor. Quite a bit for one upgrade if you ask me. With so many forms though, which one is your favorite? Feel free to let me know. And I'd love to hear the community's thoughts on the X8 version. Is it the ultimate armor reborn? Or just the true potential of the neutral armor? Special thanks to Mega Quinn for gameplay footage and to Azure Wind Productions for the translation of the manga. Big shout out to Kobun20 for his translations of all sorts of old Mega Man magazines. Without it, we would never have found the Ultimate Armor's creation story. Until next time, rock on!